الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد يقول الله عز وجل إنما يأمر مساجد الله من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وأقام الصلاة وأتى الزكاة ولم يخشى إلا الله فعسى أولئك أن يكونوا من المهتدين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in this verse, the only ones who should tend Allah's places of worship are those who believe in Allah and the last day, who keep up the prayer, who pay the prescribed alms, and who fear no one but Allah. Such people may hope to be among the rightly guided. And before we begin, our discussion today, just a reminder, in case of an emergency, please take note that the emergency exits are the ones that have exit written above them. Returning back to the verse of discussion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement, the only ones who should tend Allah's places of worship, the masajid, are those who believe in Allah and the last day, who keep up the prayer, who pay the prescribed alms, who pay the zakat, who fear no one but Allah. Such people may hope to be among the rightly guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His infinite blessings, out of His infinite wisdom, has allowed us to gather here today. There was a time where we weren't able to gather in this place. There was a time where we were not listening or not able to listen to the khutb. وَمِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ عَلَيْنَا By His blessing and His virtue, He has allowed us to gather again today. وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to benefit from the months of Ramadan and from the months of Dhul Hijjah and seek the blessings that were in those particular months, in their days and in their nights. Allah has given us an opportunity to come together to worship Him and to praise Him and to send peace and blessings on His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what is this place? How important is it? And what is its significance? And if we learned anything from this pandemic, if we learned anything from this virus, one of those things is how important this place is how important this building is and what the station of this building is in our hearts. We should know what it feels like now to be away from this place. We all know what happens when something is removed from us. We all know what it feels like to want to go to the masjid but to not have the ability to do that. How many of us used it or used those times as an opportunity to really look at how important is the masjid in my life? And if we're asking ourselves this question, what answers are we getting? Because if we are saying to ourselves, well, I didn't make that much of a difference, then we need to analyze our personal relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to look at the reasons that we were going to the masjid. We need to look at the effect that it had on our families. And if we find that it didn't change our families much, then we need to re-examine the role of the masjid. And we need to see those services that are being offered, were they important and did they have an impact on me and did they have an impact on my family? And if they didn't, there's only one of three problems. Either the problem is with me, or there's a problem with how the masjid is being administrated, or it's a combination of the two. And most, most of the time, it's usually the third. The problem is that many of us are not able to recognize our own shortcomings. Many of us will say and expect well, the masjid should do this, 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 and this. And when we say 
that the masjid and the administration needs to do one, two, and three, the question comes, like, am I not part of the masjid? Am I not part of the solution? Am I not part of what should happen here? Why do I feel like I can dump the responsibilities onto this place? When each and every one of us is responsible. How many of us are willing to take up those responsibilities? How many of us are willing to contribute? And I'm not just talking about financially. How many of us are willing to give this place time? Because when I give time, when I contribute, then I actually see what happens. And I actually see the problems. And I actually see the issues. I've had brothers and sisters come to me and complain, Ya Sheikh, the bathroom should be open. And I say, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. They should be. Are you willing to come after every salah and clean them? And if the answer is no, then the bathrooms can't be open. Ya Sheikh, we shouldn't wear these masks. This is Bayt Allah. This is Allah's home. I agree. We shouldn't have to wear these masks. Have you submitted or have you spoken to your local, leg local legislator? Have you spoken to your representative? Have you spoken to the local senator to change the laws regarding these masks? No, there's nothing I can do then. Ya yeah, Sheikh, why are we doing social distancing? This is not how the Muslims pray. We need to stand next to each other as the Prophet ﷺ ordered us. I agree. And I will ask the same question again. Have you submitted a complaint to the Center of Disease Control, to the CDC, asking them why they have the guidelines the way that they do? Every problem has a solution. But do we as Muslims, how do we view those problems? Many times, the issue is with us. We have become a problem-oriented ummah. We have not become how the Prophet ﷺ and his companions were, a solution-oriented one. We should not be coming to the masjid with our problems. We should be coming to the masjid offering solutions. And if I am not part of the solution, then it is very difficult for me to present that or to offer that. It is very easy to point out problems. And mashallah, we're very good at that. We, we know which person's prayer is accepted, and we know which person's zakat is accepted, we know which person's fast is accepted, and we know which person's hajj is accepted. Walillah alhamd. And we, we have the skill. I don't know when it came and how it came, but we have it. But when it comes to bringing solutions to actual problems, this is where we have failed on a number of fronts. Alhamdulillah. Allah's work is still going forward. Things are still happening. There's still barakah in this ummah. There's no doubt about it. But we need to change our mindset. The Prophet said, يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ أَقْوَامًا That there will be a group of people who enter paradise أَفْئِدَتُهُمْ Their hearts كَأَفْئِدَةِ الطُّيُوبِ that their hearts are like birds. Meaning these individuals are very light-hearted people. They don't hold any hiqt. They don't hold any hasad. They don't have any jealousy or animosity toward others. These are very positive people. Every time somebody comes to them with a problem, they present a solution. Every time something happens, they have a positive outlook, saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me better. Every time someone has issue, they go to that person and they remind them that Yahi, what happened to you was bad, what happened to you was wrong, and I accept that, and you, I know you must feel upset, but look at so-and-so, and look at so-and-so, and look at so-and-so. Allah has given you siha. Allah has given you the ability to see. Allah has given you the ability to smell. Allah has given you the ability to touch. Allah has given us the ability to walk. Can we replace any of these ni'am? Can we replace any of these blessings? Can we be thankful? 
for these any of these blessings, kama yastahiq Allah azza wa jal, as He is due, it's an impossible. But sometimes we forget. But walillahi alhamd. Allah gives us opportunities time and time again. Every time we come to the masjid and we see that we have to pray apart from each other, every time we come to the masjid and we're wearing our masks, every time we come to the masjid and the bathrooms are closed, this should be a reminder of Allah's blessing on us. This should not be a reminder of how difficult things are. And I'm not going to get up here and tell you that, oh, it could be worse. Of course it could be worse. But I don't focus on the worst. Be thankful for what we have. That is what's important. That we should be thankful for everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And if we want that blessing to stay, then we need to continue being thankful. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are thankful. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyid al-Anbiya wa mursaleen Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina ma ba'd Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu Allah will shade seven people on a day where there will be no shade except his Azza wa Jal And from those seven people is the one whose heart is attached to the masjid Every time he leaves he looks forward to coming back. And wallahi, there are people who came to this masjid when the masjid was closed and they would ask the security and they would say, wallahi, just give me, I, I'm not asking to go and pray, just let me just walk around the masjid. There are still people like this. These people still exist. That their heart is attached to the masjid. They're attached to this place. Where is this place in our hearts? Are we making good memories, positive memories for our children? Do our children look forward to go to the masjid? And if our children are not happy going to the masjid, we need to ask ourselves why. Many of us come to the masjid because our fathers used to bring us. And we used to go and we used to play with our friends. Or sometimes there would be tea and we would sit down and we would drink. Or sometimes our father would talk to us on the way to the masjid and on the way back. All of these happy, positive memories need to come back into these places. And when we see our children 10, 20, 30 years from now, and we see them bringing their children to the masjid, and we ask them, why do you take your child to the masjid? He said, because my father used to take me to the masjid. But now, we have many of the youth who are coming to the masjid, Rediscovering their Islam, rediscovering their attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we see that spark, many of us rush to put it out. Ya why are you dressed like that? Ya ukhti, fix your hijab. Ya your pants are too long. Your pants are too short. Where is your beard? How can you come like this dressed in the masjid? You should be ashamed of yourself. Ya is this an encouraging attitude? Is this an encouraging environment? Would you want to go to a place where the people constantly criticize you? And maybe that person is wrong. Maybe. But maybe they don't know. And while the person who stops coming to the masjid, sah, that's between him and Allah Azza wa Jal. There's no doubt. But do I want to be the reason that he stopped or she stopped? Am I ready to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tell him that I am the reason or I am the one that hurt this person? I am the one that hurt this other Muslim. And I am the reason that they stopped coming. Allah, ya khwan, be open hearted. Be soft with each other. This is the only way to make happy memories of this place. And we want this to be a place of happy memories. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a strong community, to make us understanding, to make us tolerant. To have mercy on all of those who have passed, to give shifa, to give healing to all of those who are ill, and to help all of those who are in financial difficulty now, to give all of those people who don't have jobs to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them with jobs, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift this pandemic from us and to bring us back in brotherhood 
inshallah, after all of this ends. So we have to pray without these masks so that we can stand next to each other once again. There is one request that I have been asked to share with you, and I'm sure that nobody will fall, fall short of this request. As many of you know, and many of you might even be experiencing this, the masjid is falling into deficit. And if we want this institution to stay, there is no doubt Allah will preserve it. But something as simple as donating or subscribing to donate $30 a month will take care of all of the expenses of this institution. We're talking about parking lot maintenance, cleaning the facility. Every one of us who comes to this masjid, we're utilizing the service that is here. And this salah is a service. And if we are utilizing that service, then we should try to make sure that we are preserving it. And like I said, Allah will take care of his home. Allah will take care of his house. What part do we want to play in taking care of it? So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again to bless the community and to please remember to keep these houses in our hearts and allow our hearts to be attached to them so that our children become attached to them.